Hello there. Thank you very much for joining us on the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. I am glad you took a moment out of your schedule to listen to another one of our pre-recorded lectures. We're taking you into a live service now, and we're just requesting one thing, that you do a follow-up with your Bible as we follow Christ. Amen. I'm going to talk to you today about the power that it takes to move forward in serving God. The power that it takes to move forward in serving God. Now, many of us can look at this in many different ways, forms, and fashions. But sometimes the power to move forward is based on our memory. Based on our memory of what God has done for us. And so often when we read in the Word of God, specifically the Old Testament, they, the people needed to be reminded. Reminded. Everyone say reminded of what God had done for them. If we remember, there were a lot of doubters, spe specifically the ones that Moses was leading. Doubters. For some reason they wanted to go and serve other images, other man-made gods, forgetting that the true and the living God had brought them out of Egypt. And we find ourselves in the day that we're living right now. If we're not careful, it's so easily to forget who brought us out. And we all have history. We all have a testimony. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Where God had brought us from. And there's times when we've been blessed so much over and over and over and over again. And you heard me preach so many times about hanging out with the wrong kind of people that show self-gratification. It's easy for us to begin to think that we brought ourselves out with no help from God. It's easy to think that we healed ourselves without any help from God. It's easy to think that my home that I own, my job that I have, I put forth the effort to get it without including God in the equation. And therefore, God has to send a strong delusion to remind us, it wasn't you, it wasn't about you, but it was all my doing. That's why when you look on the back of the bulletin I have written there to continue to build a relationship with the Lord, talk to Him daily, because you know what? We have to rehearse this in our mind. We have to rehearse it in our mind and keep Him before us, not behind us. And Moses, again, we're going to get into that in Deuteronomy, but as even it's edified in the New Testament, John writes in chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. How many in here is keeping his commandments? All right, that's what I wanted to hear. Try my hand too. And you know what? That's all he asked of us, that we try. And it's, Lord, I know your commandments, and I'm trying. That's all he asked. And as we look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4 through 12, we often see a wandering people who wanted to do other things, who wanted to forget the past which brought them into the future. And poor Moses, you know, he was a better man than I think all of us men could ever be in one body because he kept having patience. Uh, trying to retrieve these people to continue to serve and appreciate God and love him. And it says in verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4. The Lord 
talked with you face to face in the mountain, out of the midst of fire. Moses was reminding them of what God had done for them. Verse 5, I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for ye were afraid by reason of the fire they saw coming out of the mountain and went not up unto the mount. Now, there was, there was one situation that occurred where there was a contention between the people and Moses. And they got mad because Moses had a relationship with the Lord. They didn't. And, they, and the contention was, Moses, who do you think you are that you can go talk to God? It's a, we're just as good as you are and you're, and you're no better than us. Let us approach God and talk to him. This was their time. They approached the mountain. And when God came forth in fire and in, in the great voice that he had, it scared them to death. And you and I know ourselves when we're right and we know when we're wrong. And when we feel God near us, and lots of times it's judgment. And we don't have to fear, fear that something's going to happen to us. All we need to do is repent, confess, and ask God for forgiveness, and we're back in his grace. Simple as that. But these people here didn't want to get back in his grace. They thought it was a competition to be like Moses. You don't compete against God's chosen. When God chooses, chooses someone, the Bible says he chooses them from the, found, from the foundations of the earth. From the beginning, they were chosen. You can't go against someone that's chosen, someone that's gifted. Because God has given them a specific anointing to do specific things. And the Bible says, touch not my anointing. As we go forward and look at verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. This is the reminder. This is the reminder that God is trying uh, to bring them to attention of. Verse 7, thou shall have no other gods before me. And these are anything worshipped more than God. And you may ask at this particular moment, how can I fall into that category? We can fall into that category very easy. With the technology that's out, the new cars, the new homes, the new architects and building things, the new purchasing power to buy whatever you want. And when we get in that realm, it's easy to leave God behind. Did you hear me? It's easy to leave God behind. We had a new customer that we went to their house and the gentleman had two nice cars, wealthy. One of them was covered up. And my, one, of my, one of my employees asked if he could see that car. And he said, no, no one touches this car. He worshiped the car greater than anything. And God was not in the equation. It's easy for us to worship our children, worship our relationships, our spouses. It's easy to get there. And, and, and it's, been, it's been easy for me to follow the same trend in my earlier days. And it was like eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one will I serve? And I found myself falling in love with my kids, falling in love with, with my, my spouse. And God had to teach me. He kept questioning me. I'd go through the day. He'd say, which one's the most important, her or me, her or me? 
And I would walk away. Which one's more important, your kid or me? And I'd have walk away. And it had to be settled in my heart that God is number one. Now, am I going to stand here and tell you that it was settled just like that? No. I had to go through some hard times, some sicknesses with the kids, with, the, with uh, my first wife, and with uh, a, a divorce. I had to go through all of that before I vowed to put him ahead of everything. And when I put him ahead of everything, then, and only then only, things became to come into perspective. And the title of this message again is Having the Power to Move Forward. Having the power, understanding the power to move forward. And the power is laying aside those things that are allowed to stand between us and God. Verse 10. Let's go back to verse 9. I think I missed verse 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, we, but we have to understand that God does not allow the sins of your fathers your parents to fall upon you because they disobey only if you disobey. We all have the grace to be saved. We all have the grace to have a new start other than from what our parenting uh, or had, had uh, laid upon us. We have the grace to have a fresh start. If we acknowledge God, if we believe in God, if we trust God, and if we do that, we're going to teach our children the same concept so that the blessings don't stop but continue to fall upon them. And I want to jump back to verse 8. I, I, I missed that. Verse 8, thou shalt not make thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. We are not to make copycat images. There's people that worship the cross, worship pictures of Jesus. They're nice to have, nothing wrong with them, but we're not to put them before God. They're just a reminder. Everyone say just a reminder. Verse 11. Very clear. All of us Christians in here, out there, we have shortcomings. Amen? Is any of you there short-tempered? Sometimes more than I would like. And when we are, we say things sometimes we regret. Amen? Does that mean you're no longer a Christian? Can I hear you? Do you feel like you're no longer a Christian? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, brother. At that time. But if we remember who we are, we say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I repent in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry I did what I did. Please have mercy on me, and I receive you. Guess what? Now you're back in his grace again. And then you can go like this to Satan. Okay? Guess who won that one? You did. But the, but the one thing that you do not want to do, verse 11, and I tell my employees the same thing. You can be short, temperate, curse, whatever, but don't you take God's name in vain. I tell them, God's the one that blessed this business from the ground up. I said, why would you want to curse the one that's blessing you? 
And they look at me like I have three heads. I just say, don't do it. Because he's everything to me. And if when, at that, when Friday comes and you get a check, you ought to remember he's everything to you. Amen? And it says, Thou shalt not take the Lord's name, Lord thy God, in vain. For the Lord will not hold you guiltless that takes his name in vain. And the thing of it is, is you can't curse the name of the Lord and bless the name of the Lord at the same time. What's it say in the New Testament? A double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. A double-minded person. If they're unstable, it means they're over here, then they're over here. But really, who are they? They don't even know who they are. In other words, when I'm with the world, I curse God. Yeah, we drink, we have a good time. And then with the Christians, oh, praise God. He's so wonderful. Who are you? Who are you? You're no one I want to be around. And we have to learn the power and the importance of who that name is and represents. It's a name that will get you out of trouble when you're in trouble. It's a name that you can pray to and not just get results, but feel it inside. That's the name I want to be friends with. Let's talk a little bit about the power of grace. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 10. I don't know why I put 1 John up there. I think it's just John 1, 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Listen to this. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us for, from all unrighteousness. Verse 9 again. What does it say? If we confess. What does it say? You've got to open your mouth up. You've got to talk to the Lord. And you've got to let it out. And then ask him to forgive us. And he will. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, talk about it. Come on, talk about it to God. Talk about it to God. Amen? It's not necessary to pick the phone up and talk about it to your neighbor, to your friend. Because you still haven't been forgiven. Because you haven't talked to God. But when we talk to God, he has a way of making it all right. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So don't go around and say, now I'm a Christian, I'm saved. I never have sinned since that day. We're lying. We're lying and we're going to be flying. Because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every last one of us. And when we say we haven't, it says we, we make him a liar. In other words, he died on the cross of Calvary for us because we're sinners. We're saying, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I didn't need you to die for me. And the Bible says, and his word is not in us. In other words, we all have sinned in one way or another with no escape. This is the power of grace through forgiveness, through Jesus Christ. And in our minds, brothers and sisters, we ought to have it set. That number one, I want to be saved. Everyone say that with me. Number one, I want to be saved. Number two, I want to be forgiven of my sins. And if we walk straight forward with that concept in our minds, 
We're going to talk to him regularly. We're going to build a relationship. And he's not going to be behind us, alongside of us, but he's going to be before us. And we'll find ourselves getting out of more dilemmas than we thought we were able to get out of. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 clearly says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I will remember them no more. Why do we take our time and put so much energy into trying to make God remember them? I'm asking you. You see some, I don't know if you ever got together with some get, some get together Christians. We're all sitting around the table, our legs crossed. I, I remember when I did this and I did that. Oh my gracious, a lie. I don't know what God was thinking when he let me get, uh, go through this and go through that. We're trying to make God remember what we did. God said, I have for, forgiven you as far as the east is to the west. Does anybody know how far that is? So just receive it. We don't always have to conversate over what, unless you're giving God glory. If you're giving God glory, well, God, God forgave me for this. He brought me out for his glory. Well, you're giving him praise now. But don't bring things up to make it look like that God still remembers and he's still holding your ticket. He's looking around at the angel saying, what, what, what are we going to do with this? He's already forgiven you. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been forgiven. And don't forget it. Say it, don't forget it. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16 through 18. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Now this is the act of the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit coming on you. It's not about speaking in tongues and dancing around. It's having His Spirit in you, hiding His Word in your heart. And that's how you know, oops, Shouldn't have did that. Whoops. Shouldn't have said that. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess. I'm asking you for forgiveness. That's the Holy Spirit hiding his word in your heart as a memorial to remember what he did on the cross of Calvary for you that you might be mindful. Everyone say mindful of what he did for you so that you can continue to stay in line with the Father through Jesus Christ. Verse 17, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Here we go again. Your sins and your iniquities I will remember no more. Stop trying to make me remember them. Verse 18, now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. What's he saying? Paul's writing saying, Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. The, the, the last atonement for everyone's sin that is not necessary to look for another. This is the only and the final. And the Bible goes on to say, if you try to enter into heaven any other way, Jesus said this, but through me, you're the same as a thief and a liar and the truth isn't in you. So stop trying to take shortcuts. Stop trying to, stop trying to do your meditations. Stop trying to, to find out about all the other 40,000 religions that's out there. Because he's the only way. The believer's power and security, this is the believer's power and security through grace. Or last scripture. Romans 8, chapter 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I asked you that. Who shall, who's going to separate you from Christ? Hmm? 
Are you sure about that? Who's going to try? Satan. Yep, Satan's going to try. But we know the word of God. We know that we win. Amen? We know that we win. And we're not going to give him the thought that he is going to be able to separate us from the love of God. And, and again, it goes on. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? That is, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But we still stand up for what we know. Now, you want me to give you a wonderful example of someone that stood up and was in this category? You probably never even thought about it. It was Lazarus. Remember the story with Lazarus and the rich man? You remember that? How did he die? Poor as a pauper, where he didn't even have food to eat. He just ate the scraps from his master's table. And the Bible says the only consolation that he got was the dogs licking his sores. Now, if that doesn't fulfill this verse, you tell me what. You give me another example. But he held on to the end. And do you remember what the end was? The end was when they both stood before the Father. The rich man was dismissed to go into torment. And the rich man went in to paradise. And the Bible says there's a great gulf fixed between them. The rich man could look over and see Lazarus just in comfort and peace, just enjoying life. And he was in torment. And he began to talk to the father. Can you send somebody back to tell my, my, my brethren, don't come to this place. And God said, they're going to have ample chance just like you did, but you made your choice. So when we end up, when the end comes and we end up, on the right side, that's when we finally realize, if we hadn't, that it was worth it all. It was worth it all. Verse 36, as it is written for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, nay, in all these things we are no more than conquerors through that, that him that loved us. We're conquerors. We're conquerors. We're survivors. We're can-do people. We get it done. We know the word. We live the word. We exercise the word. And we don't stop because we are heaven-bound. Everyone say that. I am heaven-bound. And Paul goes on to say, verse 38, For I am and persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And when you are able to say, and pronounce a statement like that, you know Jesus. You know Jesus. And you know him in a way that you know what you have is not worth selling out or giving up for anything. Because there's nothing on this earth that is bigger or better or greater to overthrow you to the point where you no longer want to serve God. The message, understanding the power to move forward. That power lies within you. If you exercise it, if you work it, it's going to work with you. 
It's going to work with you. And you will grow and grow and grow. So my, again, my advice always is, the scriptures are on the bulletin. Read them during the week and get reacquainted with the sermon. And ask God before you read them to hide that word in your heart and give you wisdom and knowledge to understand it. Father, we thank you today for this message. We pray that it falls on good ground, good hearts, on the ears and on the eyes to see it, feel it, hear it, and know that it's true that we may grow in grace as we learn more about you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for joining us at the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. And we encourage you to continue to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people have the time or take the time to talk to him, but he wants to be your best friend. Also continue to consider receiving him as Lord and Savior in your life and allowing him uh, to work a great peaceful work in your life, knowing that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Also, remember to continue to repent, confessing, asking forgiveness of all of our sins on a daily basis. And the most important thing is, after receiving Christ as Lord and Savior, is receiving his forgiveness in your heart. God bless you until next time.